All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. How's it going? Uh, this is 7.3 notes. All right. Um, hope you did well on your quiz. And here we go. Now, 7.3. Let's say I say f of x, so a function of x, is equal to 2x plus 3. All right. And then we're going to go g of x. Okay, another function is x squared plus 5. Alright, so those are the two functions I'm working with. Now, I'm going to ask you questions like um, f of x plus g of x. Alright, so what this is asking is for you to take what this function equals and add it to this other function. So we know f of x is 2x plus 3. And we're going to add g of x, which in this case is x squared plus 5. Now, actually, for the sake of argument, I'm going to color code these. All right, so I'm going to do g of x in red. It's going to stay the same, so you don't have to erase anything. Uh, just for understanding purposes, I'm going to write it in red. All right, now, once we have it set up, go ahead and combine your like terms. And we're left with x squared plus 2x plus 8. Now, today we're going to focus on not only our functions, all right, but our domain. Now, the domain for this would be x could be all real numbers, all right, because it doesn't matter what x is. It could be negative, it could be a decimal, it could be a fraction, it doesn't matter. We'll be able to deal with it, all right? So what if I gave you something like f of x times f of x? All right, so we take my function 2x plus 3, and we're going to multiply it by f of x again. 2x plus 3. All right, so we're going to foil that out. 2x and 2x is 4x squared plus 6x plus 6x plus 9. Combine your like terms, 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. Right. And now let's look at the domain of that. Again, in this case, my domain, x could be all real numbers. All right, one more. Let's go g of x minus f of x. Ooh. So my g of x is x squared plus 5, and we're subtracting f of x. Now you got to be careful here. You have to remember to put f of x in parentheses, all right, because you have to remember to distribute that negative. So when I solve this, I get x squared plus 5 minus 2x minus 3. Combine your like terms. x squared minus 2x plus 2 is my solution there. And here my domain is still all real numbers. All right, the domain will get more difficult. I'm just setting you up for it. All right, now, so those are the easy ones to refresh your mind. We've, we've done function notation like that before. Now let's talk about composition of functions. Okay, so let's say I go f of g of x. f of g of x. All right, so the composition of functions. Now, what this means is I start with f of x. Alright, so I'm going to start with this function. Except for everywhere where I see an x, I'm going to substitute in g of x. So it actually says g of x is in f of x. Because think about it. If I said f of 2, or I choose something else, f of 6, that'd be a little easier. So I take f of x and I go 2, and instead of x, I'm replacing that x with a 6. 2 times 6 plus 3, and I would solve. But here it says I'm replacing everything in f with g of x. So everywhere I see an x, I'm actually going to put x squared plus 5, and then continue writing the rest of my function. So what I did is I picked up this piece, and I put it for x in this piece. All right, does that make sense? Okay, we'll be doing a lot of these, so you'll pick up on it if you're struggling with the concept initially.
So now all we do is take this and simplify it. So distribute your 2. 2x two squared plus 10 plus 3 gives me 2x squared plus 13. Not so bad. Now, again, here my domain is all real numbers because that's what I'm dealing with. All right, let's try another one. This time, let's go g of f of x. So this time, it says you're starting with your g function. So I have x squared. So everywhere I see an x, I'm actually putting my f of x equation. So I'm going to go 2x plus 3 squared plus 5. So in g of x, that was my x, and I substituted in 2x plus 3 instead. All right, so this is 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3 plus 5. So multiply that out. You have 4x squared plus 6x plus 6x is plus 12x plus 9 plus 5. So 4x squared plus 12x plus 14. Again, my domain is all real numbers. All right, uh, let's do another one. We're having so much fun, I can't stop now. So f of f of x. Ugh. It's tough to write. f of f of x. All right, it's like inception. All right, we're going to take f of x, so 2. But everywhere I see an x, I'm going to input f of x. 2 times 2x plus 3. And I'm going to finish at x plus 3. All right, so this is, was my x and f of x that I substituted in. So distribute your 2, 4x plus 6 plus 3. I'm left with 4x plus 9. Again, my domain is all real numbers. All right, good stuff. Now, um, let's do some real math now. That's the easy stuff. Now, before we, we get into it, I want to talk about domain. All right. Now, it's usually all real numbers if we're dealing with something that we think of. If you could plug in any number and solve, what would you get? Now, have to be careful. Let's say we have a square root of an even number. Right? The E is for even. Remember, we can have no negative in here. So my domain is going to be x is greater than or equal to 0. Because I can't have a negative in there, so I have to have a positive number. Now, if it is an odd, remember, if we have the square root of an odd root, it can still be all real numbers because we can deal with the all real numbers. We can deal with the negative in there. And if I'm left with a function like this, remember, we can have no 0 in the denominator. So those are kind of the, all the laws and rules that we know that force us to handle something like that. Okay, so with that, that was a little review. With that, we're going to do the problem now. So let's say I have m of x is equal to 2x to the 1 half. n of x is equal to 4x to the 2 fifths. And t of x is equal to 6x to the negative second. Now, we're going to do three problems with this, but before we get started, I'd like to go identify the domain in each. Now, x to the 1 half is the square root of x. So that's an even, right? That's an even root. So we know x cannot be negative. So my domain for this little mini function here is x has to be positive. All right, I'm, just, I'm going to keep this here for reference because we're going to come back to it. Over here, uh, x is the fifth root, right? x squared, a fifth root. So this is an odd root. So my x can be all real numbers. All right, and I'm referencing the, what we just reviewed above. Now here we have a negative exponent. So really, we would bump him downstairs, right? Now, in order for this, we cannot have a 0 in the denominator. So my domain was, well, x can't be 0. Similar to our functions that we graphed with our asymptotes. All right, we can't have a zero in the denominator. So those are really the three rules to follow. If you have an even root, can't be negative, so we have to be positive. Here it can be anything because we have an odd root. And then here we can't have a zero in the denominator. So 
Your examples are going to go something like this. I'm going to say m of x times n of x. All right, now solve like we normally would. So substitute in your pieces. m of x is 2x to the 1 half, and we're multiplying it by 4x to the 2 fifths. So just when you thought you are out of the clear of last yesterday's quiz, all that stuff is back to haunt us. It's not going away. So numbers with numbers, 2 times 4 is 8. 1 half times x to the 2 fifths, we'll put that in your calculator, and you add them because we have the same base. So we get x to the 9 tenths. So when I simplify that, I get 8, then the 10th root of x to the 9th. Nothing can simplify. Now, when talking about the domain, we must consider our final solution and our beginning solution. And we kind of combine the domains to make it the most specific one. So if you think about it, okay, m of x is x has to be positive, and n of x can be anything. So already my most restricted domain is x has to be positive. This one doesn't matter because it can be anything. So we're looking at the most restricted. Now, if you go down here and look at your answer, we have to consider this too. Now, this is an even root, so here x has to be positive too. So with those three pieces, what's my most restricted domain? Well, x would have to be positive. All right, I know it's, it's different because we're considering multiple things, but you'll get used to it. Let's try another one. Uh, N of M of X. So we're combining what we learned above. So now I start with N. So I have 4 times X to the 2 fifths. But instead of X, I'm substituting in M of X. So I have 2X to the 1 half. All right, so that's my M piece. Now let's simplify that. So I have 4 times 2 to the 2 fifths, X to the 2 tenths. All right. So I get, and all this noise is kind of get together. So I get 4, 2 to the 2 fifths times X to the 1 fifth. All right, so really this is 4 times the fifth root of 2 squared, right, times the fifth root of x. So those are both fifth roots. So we have 4 on the outside times the fifth root of 4x, right, because 2 squared is 4 and x. All right, and we can drop the parentheses at this point. All right, now let's go consider all my domains. Okay, well, my domain of n was all real numbers, so not very restrictive. m was positive, so it had to be positive. Now, down here, I actually have an odd root, so, again, all real numbers. So, when considering those three, my most restrictive domain would be x has to be positive. All right? Not so bad. Okay, I'm going to leave you with one to try. Okay, it's going to be t of n of x. t of n of x. All right, now give this one a try, and this is where we'll start first thing tomorrow in class, and then we'll do a little other review and make sure we're comfortable with this before moving forward. All right, thanks. Enjoy your evening.